So I'm pretty sure I'm on the record stating that I'm not a fan of this series, which is putting it mildly, but I think it's best to kick off the year with a public airing of why I think the series is one of my least favorites. The main goal of the series was to take the simple Japanese game of King's Game and turn it into a horror series, which is a pretty decent idea to expand upon. Again, for those not aware, the King's Game is a game where a group of players, either through some form of random selection or turns, pick numbers, with one player getting the number to make them the king. The king then gives challenges or dares to either one number or a pair of numbers. Those individuals with those numbers reveal themselves, and they have to do said challenge. This is also commonly played as a drinking game, but it's not exactly required. To adapt this game to the horror genre, the series has to class of students and use their desk numbers as the numbers they use to give challenges through a group text, with it starting off simple and then eventually escalating to the games of life and death. Which is pretty alright as far as ideas go. Again, with only 12 episodes and 32 characters, some of these characters are going to be paper thin at times, but with how bloody he's going for his kills, fans of gory death game series should enjoy the series and would probably be able to excuse some of its weaker characters, as long as you get some good kills. But unfortunately, this is where the issues start to appear. As the series is not just adapting the original King's Game manga, but the sequel series as well, meaning that we just don't have 32 students, we have 63 students. So we move from paper thin to non-existent with the characters. We also have to have several kills be done off screen, as well as cut entire chapters from both parts. At least that's what I assume, as I've only read the first part. All of this makes the calling of the cast even less effective, as why should I care about these characters if I don't know who they are? It also exasperates any pacing issues the base series had, as even with an even split, each part is only getting 6 episodes, which is not a lot to work with, meaning the series is on a super fast pace, which really hurts the series' chance of developing tension with its games. As not only is it light on characters to care about, but it also has to be pretty quick in getting through them. Then there are the story issues. Because of all is the reason these students are getting killed. And this is one of the biggest misses the series has. So for context, we've seen our characters be decapitated, set on fire, have body parts shoot off like rockets, and other punishments outside of the realm of simple possibility. But the force behind this is stupid. So the thing looking to kill off these teens is an internet virus that started as an actual virus that wants to end the world. To do this, it hypnotizes those that play the king's game so they can send it a kill signal so that the body will kill itself all commonly in one survivor who will continue to start the game again until everyone's dead. So one, that's not how hypnotism works. Two, that's not how the human body works. Three, how does a virus become an internet virus? Four, like, hello? Like, do I need to explain how much this is a failure on concept alone? You see people's heads spinning around like tops and you're telling me that no supernatural force behind this, only a bit of hypnotism is needed? One of the most important parts of a horror series is how you portray the force of horror. So if you're going to make the force behind it a mystery, it needs to match the hints you're giving and the nature of the kills. Get that mix wrong and uh-oh, SpaghettiOs! But that's not all, we got plot holes, so it's established that the main character is the survivor of the first game. We also learn that the antagonist classmate that's looking to make sure everyone else dies so they survive, also survived a different game. But she doesn't turn yonderay on the guy until after the explanation of the game, even though he's been saying the entire time leading up to that, that this game is for keeps. So like, why did she not put two and two together? Is it for a what a twist moment? Yeah, it's for an out of nowhere twist, but don't worry. She's only killing everyone else, so none of her friends have to betray their friends. So she'll play the villain of mercy kill the entire cast. So she's totally redeemed and not an absolute nutcase, right? No, that's not how that works. But at least the kills are good, right? I guess, but like none of the characters matter, so I feel nothing seeing them happen. Plus I have the sensor to the decapitation and that's ugly. But you had to know that you, that wouldn't have been able to be shown and you would have to work around that, right? Like you hit the other decapitations in the first part. So did the team who did the second part just not know? Also, the animation is kind of ugly for 2017 standards, so that's a negative. So in summary, the story is god awful, the characters are bad, the kills lack any nuance, and it lacks the strength in the art department to make up for any of these issues. So frankly, I don't see an audience for this series, so no, I don't feel the series is worth watching. 